Mamalodi. It's a township located about 30 kilometers northeast of Pretoria in South Africa. It is part of the Metropolitan Municipality of Chishwani in Gauteng. It was created under the apartheid laws to accommodate the black population of Pretoria, expelled from the city center. According to the 2011 census, Mamalodi has more than 334,577 inhabitants. It is in this suburb made up of more than 98% of the black populations that we are following the footsteps of Brother Israel Ngadima, a South African pastor heading a big church in the end time message. It is in his private residence, located in the Meyer Spark suburb in Pretoria, that we have an appointment with him. We are greeted by the two melodious voices on the song, You Are Wonderful. Your grace abounds to me. And after a few minutes, I wanna take the pastor appears in his living room smiling and warmly and greeting us. Shine it all First help me to, to live in Who is Israel Nkadima? This man who preaches the end time message in this township for over 40 years. He worked selflessly for decades and managed to save thousands of souls for the glory of the Lord. Very gifted in the teachings about the seals, Reverend Nkadima strongly defends the revelation of the seventh seal and the ministry of the Son of Man. Our camera followed him for two days to realize this documentary, which we devote to him. Mamalodi Tabernacle is the name of his church. It has been established in the suburb of Pretoria since the early 1990s but its origins go back several decades. Israel and Kadima was born in the same area formerly called Black Fontaine. Yeah, but up here close to the mountain. Mm. Yes, that's where I was born. My father came from Zim, uh. and uh, but he came to South Africa uh. to settle, and uh, he started to work here and married a uh, South African woman, mother being a Tswana woman. And uh, that's why now, we, since we were we always with the mother, we ended up being like Tswanas. How I got married is that uh, when I was still uh, with the Assemblies of God, mm. there was uh, the very same wife I, I married. Because myself, I, 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 I was a person who could not uh, speak to a woman and say, I love you, I want to marry you, and, and it was done for me when my, um, I don't know how my mother spoke to her mother and so so. Then I, I started just visiting the uh, home of that sister, but to give her the spoken word and mm. so forth because I already was supplying the goods okay. to some other okay. people. And uh, uh, but uh, when uh, the first book in it I gave her, and uh, she responded by saying, ah, this is the truth of God, it is this, this. And I thought to myself, yeah, yeah, this should be the right way. Because at that time, there was no church. I, I promised to marry, to marry her. And uh, so now, um, 
so the, the thing grew up like that and the mm. uh, arrangements were made. Eventually I got married. His childhood and youth are marked by some unusual facts. He was followed by signs since birth. Whereas before I was born, uh, it was like uh, my, my mother uh, had died. So she was pronounced dead. And then uh, after that, she tells me and the rest of the people, even my wife knows about the story, that uh, um, when she was now out, gone, she was like uh, in a place where she received a, a, a vision, like, or somebody talking to him. At the same time, she was pronounced dead. But he uh, said, uh, that voice said, go back. Go back because uh, there's a, uh, 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 look at the tears of the people. Mm. There's a work to be done. Now she didn't understand what about tears of rich people and so forth. But it said there, uh, uh, look at the tears of the people. And they saw, so go back. So she, she, she woke up then. And they saw, that's when I was born after that. Then now, um, she grew up with this thing in, in her mind, what it meant. Go back, I see, and see the chance of the people, so on, so on. Then when I started the, the ministry, uh, she, she now remembered, she could compare now. When I was going to Congo, to there, to there, and the people calling me from all both sides. Then she said, uh, can this be the thing that I was told that look at the tears of the people, that they, and my son now is going around. Here, the man takes us to one of the places he used to go when he was still very young. This is a place when uh, one day, that was uh, uh, late 60s, I was, I, I was here with uh, a dog, my dog, we call that dog Sputnik. So now, when I was walking here, right close to the water, that dog started to know when a dog sees something, that is very strange to me. It started with the tail between the legs like that, actually blocking my way. So I was trying to kick it, but the uh, uh, humming like. Then uh, it happened that I looked around, knowing that knowing uh, that there's very something very strange that the dog is seeing. But now uh, I was just alone. From there I moved on, and when I uh, almost reached this road, and the, 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 the dog started to show some signs uh, of being out of that uh, the danger area, and uh, it was now hunting because it was all the way to us, uh, grass up to the road. There. So I entered the house of a friend of mine somewhere here. I can point out now where the place was. When I entered there, I found the father of my friend Joel and two friends drinking. I asked them, I told them about the, the, the thing that uh, the experience there. I said I was there and uh, something happened there uh, because uh, it was so chilly, yet it was uh, around 12 o'clock, the sun was hot, 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 hot. Then while I was saying to them, I said, now I don't know, uh, I don't know, maybe you people, you old people, you know about these things. And one said to me, I am from uh, Port Elizabeth, I know these things. And he said, you are lucky, you, 
because uh, your ancestors stood for you. Where I said, what, what was wrong? And he said to me, be careful every time you are crossing a river. Anytime that thing can take you because they see you everywhere. If you, are, you get into the water, they see you. If you cross the river, they are looking. I said, who are they? And he said, no, it is the, the underworld gods like they want you, they need you. I said for to kill me, he said, no, 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 they want to use you. So now I'll show you the police there. Pastor Nkodima has had plenty of this kind of testimonies his whole life, which gave a glimpse of the star of a true servant of God in the making. A former chorister in a Pentecostal church, Brother Nkodima came across his first William Branham preaching in 1972, and this led him to believe the end time message. Now, when we were at church, I used to sing in the choir. Now there was a, a, a girl after the church uh, with the spoken word, God of this evil age, in her hand. Now, I was attracted by the color of this book and, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, title on the book, God of this age. Yeah. So I said to this girl, can I see this book? Then I look at it. It, it attracted me so much, God of this evil age. And I said, can you borrow me this book? She said, no, it's my father's book. And I said, can I borrow it? I'll bring it back tomorrow. She said, yes, if you can bring it back tomorrow because it's my father's book. She, he's going to ask me, where's the book? And when I arrived home, I, that night, I, I, I read the whole book that night. God of this age. Oh, oh. And uh, I yeah, the, now this is the thing I, I, I actually am looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the, I went to to her father, a pastor in that church. I went straight to his home, right in Mamelodi. I said, hey, Pastor, where did you get this book? And he said, oh, do you like that book? I said, yes, I like this book. And uh, then he said, okay, I can give you more of these books mm -hmm. and the address of the place where you can get these books. So he came with uh, daddy, uh, 70 weeks, seven seals, church ages. So he went uh, At that time, I didn't even realize that it's Brother Brennan. No, it was just the contents, the message mm -hmm. that he was pulling me, but not even seeing that it's the same man. But uh, I said, okay, he gave me the, those books. It's then I started reading this book. And then uh, I left that church, giving to some other brothers the spoken word. This pastor, he received these books from Brother Retief. He gave me the address, said, if you want more of these books, you phone this man, Willie Retief. Then I phoned Brother Retief. He said, eh, I have received some books so, 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 from a, a, a minister in Mamelodi, and uh, I'm very interested in them. Mm -hmm. Then Brother Retief said, okay, it will be a good thing if maybe one day you can visit him. That's how they will think that. Uh, We thought even the rapture would come in those days mm. Mm. because uh, uh, it came with such an impact in, in our hearts. It left an impact that even the rapture will just come with uh, thinking of that. The man who helped me a lot mm. was Brother Reti. He is the one, he is the one who baptized me, uh, offered us the tape recorders mm. and uh, the reels and then we started playing, encouraging us that to play, you know, for the people and so, so this message. 
and uh, he was so much supportive uh, even with the uh, books mm. uh, uh, and so forth so so then we started with them enough material now mm. and uh, going forward and preaching to the people testifying and so forth mm. now that's why we started as that small group mm -hmm. yeah and uh, but uh, we were so happy that uh, at, at least myself I have found what I needed. At the time, apartheid raged rigorously throughout the country. Black people have no right to live along whites, and the repression of public protests are recurrent. Yeah, apartheid was there, but uh, yet uh, we were, uh, it was like we were saving Africans. Yeah. yeah because uh, we couldn't go to some white people yeah. with that message or preach to them. So it was just preaching to our African people. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, it didn't bother us. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, to some people, especially born in those days, it was like, it was like uh, the, the uh, way life was. Mm. or it is yeah so now with us we grew up under that regime you know and uh, so now it was the way of life to us although it was hard mm. but uh, uh, we didn't foresee anything that one day we will also be independent and so mm. forth yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. only that we uh, people like Mandela then they were arrested Mm -hmm. So so we could just read in the papers uh, that these men are trying, you know, for equality and so forth mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. and the freedom for all the people of the country. Mm -hmm. But then the regime that time was because it uh, was mostly African. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, but then uh, with us, it didn't bother us. Okay. We, we could freely go and pray yeah. okay. as long as. You, you were preaching to your own people, African. Yeah. yeah, they wouldn't bother you. Yeah. We did, we did like, especially with the relative. Okay. Yes, we could, we, we could go to his church, we could go to his house. And, uh, um, uh, and uh, he, he introduced this, uh, and uh, even Carlos brothers to us, okay. like Brother Beckett in Cape Town, mm -hmm. and uh, Brother Roscoe. Yeah, it's Brother Retief who introduced them okay. to us, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, when Brother Becker, the first time he came over here to Pretoria, mm -hmm. Brother Retief told me that it's better that, that, that you meet that brother. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brother Roscoe also, I met him later, so forth. So we, we, we did visit uh, bra brothers, bra Brother Roscoe. They yeah. would invite us, yeah. saying there's a Brother Joseph Coleman coming. Mm -hmm. We used to go to the meetings okay. and some other meetings uh, of the color in the, this colored area there. Okay. Yes. So the only man we used to visit was Brother Retief okay. because that was the only man, white man we knew at that time. Okay. And uh, he was like a father to us. Yeah. It was during this time that he started his church, Mamelodian Tabernacle, with just four people. We started to rent a classroom when yeah. we were we were four. We were right in Mamelodi there. And then we started preaching. I was preaching there. And later we were joined up by a certain brother uh, who also is a preacher. So we started just preaching there. I would be preaching to three people or four people. Yeah. Unless one day we have a visitor, then it will, you know, add it to. But it started like that in the classroom in Mamelodi, and uh, people were calling us names and saying things about us mm -hmm. uh, that we are a, a man, man follower and talking about Brother Brennan. Mm -hmm. To feel this reality, the pastor leads us up to this place where the Church of Mamelodi started. It was in this primary school, the only one that existed in the time in the neighborhood. Oh. 
Yeah, we are in Mamelodi. Uh, I think the, the name is still Moretti School. Yeah, it's Moretti School, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, you know, I started here, oh. but it's that class we the first one. Yeah, that's the one. The church also we started. It's my, my classroom. Yeah, we started the church also in my former classroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was something very strange. Because when we came uh, to ask for a classroom, we were given that one. It is precisely here in this classroom that they held their first prayer meeting 47 years ago. Yeah, this was my first classroom. I started school here. And when we looked for a, a place for to worship, we were offered the very same classroom. That's okay. it. Nothing has changed except that now there's more pictures and the city maybe is the modern one, but the, that is the same classroom. You used to sit? I used to sit on this side. In the second bench, the second desk, I used to sit here. And when we started, we were four. Four? Yeah, in this yeah, room. Yeah, in this person. We were only four when we started. Yeah. So it just grew up from here, then we moved to another. Okay, so when was it? Hmm. In the early 70s, yeah, around 72. It's a very old school. Yeah, the first schools here in Mamelodi. But all this is extensions. Yeah. It was just uh, up to here yeah, to the corner. From this school, the church took wings. It moved from one place to another because of the number of worshipers who increased daily. The last place they rented before buying their own land was here at the University of Pretoria. They stayed here for about four years. This is the university. Uh, it used to be called Vista University, but now it's Pretoria University. Before we built our tabernacle, we used to fellowship in here. Then we moved over from here to Nassau. And it was around 1987 that the church bought this place where the tabernacle of Mamelodi is built today. when we get this place then, mm -hmm. then we started building while we were still at this time. It was around, uh, I think, 89. 89? Yeah, I think 89 when we started with the project. 87 up to 89. The project took us around five years, I think. To give us an idea of this tabernacle, the pastor put at our disposal one of his trusted deacons, Brother Skosana Peter. It was with him that we spent our days shooting this documentary. Behind the wheel of his 4x4, he shows us the township of Mamelodi. He knows very well the neighborhood because he's lived here for a long time. This, there was no one that was playing it. It used to be just a, uh, an unoccupied place. When we left this place for Maupan, the, the location was not that far. Like 
At the church, Brother Peter shows us the various courts of the Temple of Mamelodi Tabernacle. The truth is that the ministry of Reverend Israel Nkadima has produced several young ministers. The pastor opened more than 10 sister churches across the country and ordained pastors at each of them. We started going to some other areas now, mm -hmm. like in Pumalanga, Petersburg and so forth. Okay. Yes, and I ordained some pastors in those areas. Yeah. I remember the two pastors, the first two pastors I ordained, one was in the site of uh, um, Pumalanga, the other one in Petersburg. Mm. Yes, then we started going around with the spoken word, giving to the people, up to uh, then that was to Zimbabwe. Israel Nkadima is one of the elder preachers of the message. He is well known on the teachings about the revelation of the seals. He firmly believes in opening the seventh seal. Brother, if the seventh is not revealed, then the seals are not revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the thing is, the seven revealed the seals. That is where the problem is with the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the Bible says, when he opened one of the seals, he doesn't know which one, he doesn't say which one, one of the seals, I saw white holes open. Mm -hmm. So now, they, they don't see this one, one of the seals. Then I saw, because now uh, that one of the seals shows you the seals. Now, what the people don't see is that you cannot, in, you don't know, you can't know the church ages without receiving Brother Brennan. No. You can't know the seals without receiving the seventh seal. Yeah. Because the seventh seal reveals the, the other yeah, seals. Okay. Uh, now if I say the seventh is not revealed, not now the, that oh, means yeah, all, the, all the seals are yeah. not revealed. 
With more than 40 years of ministry, God continues to powerfully use him through a gift of exceptional deliverance, which sets captives free daily. This is the case of these two girls, which he took charge of. They operated in the world of witchcraft. Their mission was to kill the pastor. I remember when I came here, um, they told me to kill him. I came here to his office and trying to throw, uh, to, uh, to throw spells on him. And then I saw a big light and it stopped me and I fell down. I was planning to kill him and destroy his family because they sent me for Omni to stay here for six months. Then after six months, I was told that if I fail the mission, they're gonna kill me. So I came here trying to kill the pastor. I was using my eyes. Sometimes I can change them to red, sometimes to green, sometimes to white. So I can come here as like I want to tell him something, but he was just looking at me like this, and then I was gonna, I was starting to be in somehow because the power of God was destroying me. They are now delivered through the prayers of the man of God. It is just God, brother, because now um, they bring, I'm dealing with the possessed people, but uh, you know, you feel like you, I just feel as a son of God, and I've got the power to, and the commission to to cast that thing out. And this is what is happening right now. He doesn't like to do things and leave it that way and start another thing and leave it right. When he's doing a thing, mm. he follows it up to you. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Maybe there will be a child that has been infiltrated by a wrong spirit, like they joined the Satanism and things like that. He won't just pray for that individual and, 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 and leave. No, he will follow it up until that child is redeemed, until that child or that individual is okay. And then he sits there and then he, and then he will say, no, this is my trophy. And this is my trophy. Well, many people don't understand him, but what I can say is that um, God is using that man and God is in that man in a mighty way. You know, I, I can't explain it. Then on the natural side, he's very strict, that I can tell you. He, he can't tolerate nonsense. Yeah, but um, besides that, he's an understanding father. You can discuss anything with him. You just be open to you. But one thing he doesn't like is lies and dishonesty. Yeah, that they he, he becomes another person. If you can't believe the transmitter, then you can't believe God. The reputation of his ministry has crossed the borders. He has made several missionary trips around the world. He has been to many countries. When I was in Gabon, the pastor told me uh, of some stories recorded. Because Malawi, every time I go there, we <laughs> they arrange a service at the stadium. Mm. Mm. The last time I was there, it was at the stadium, yeah. and, and many people were. Were, were, were healed, many people gave their lives to God at the stadium there. The Democratic Republic of Congo, he knows it by heart. He went there more than once. In Lower Congo, Bandundu, Kasai and Kinshasa. Here, for example, we can see how he is received with all the honors by the believers of Sion Tabernacle Church, located in the territory of Inango, in the province of Mayandambe. In 
In Kinshasa, he was one of the main speakers at the International Youth Convention held in August 2015 by Shekinah Tabernacle Church of Pastor Richard Dioka. Uh, for coming to share with you uh, the word of God, the possibility of me to partage the word of God with you. And may the Lord bless uh, Pastor Dioka. It is the Lord bless Pastor Dioka. After the great work on the missionary field, the pastor is back in his country. We are in his church. Our camera is always turning and we follow him everywhere. Here is his office. This is my office, my brother, and uh, um, let me just show you guys. So what is this? The Paranam. Yeah. I got this from Cameroon. Wow. Uh, given to me by... says your son is a pastor there in Jewel. Yeah. So he's a pastor there in Cameroon. Like this statue, many other gifts are piled up in this office. They are all memories that he brought back from his many missionary trips abroad. And this also is uh, from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, it was given to me. You know, this was given to me after a sister testified. She is a brother Masiti's wife. So I was preaching at the memorial service and uh, after the death of one of our deacons. And while preaching, there was a, a certain woman uh, from a certain denomination seated down there in their hall where I was preaching. Now she was opposing me. While I was talking, preaching, she said, no, it's not like that, it's not like that. She said with her husband. And uh, the sisters, including Sister Masetti, they saw something when I raised my hand like this. They saw a sword uh, 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 from my, my, my hand. Uh, just uh, a sword from my hand, uh, uh, like light. And it hit that sister that was seated there opposing, she fell down and they saw they were trying to revive her. The husband was also angry saying, yeah, leave her alone, leave her alone. Then the sister testified in Cameroon about it and after that they, uh, uh, the pastor gave me this sword. I don't know where they took the sword from, sword, sword from and he said this is your sword. <laughs> Such testimonies are frequent in his ministry. Wherever he went, he did not leave without any testimony. At Mamelodi Assembly, 
It is almost every week that he baptizes people. The number of members in the church increases daily. Space becomes cramped in this building. It is now difficult to host conventions and other special meetings held at the end of every month. Meetings that bring together all their sister churches. Before the end of our documentary, we were taken to visit the new ground, more larger, that the church has just bought in this bush just a few months ago. Uh, this thing was bought um, about nine months ago. So we want to finish with that project then. then after when we were through with that project, we come over here. Then we know that we're going to concentrate here. So that when we, we, we now the, the, the designers and the engineers and whatever it is, the draftsmen, they're still busy with that. In a short time, a new building will rise from this ground to the great pride of these believers. Mamalodi Tabernacle has 47 years of existence, one of the reference churches for many believers of the end time message here in South Africa. Sing my country,